By the end of this video, I'm going to tell you the top five things you need to know about your spindles, torque, and power. I want to talk a bit about one of the most important and commonly misunderstood characteristics of a CNC machine. If you don't understand what I'm about to explain, you could absolutely make a mistake that will follow you for years and cost you thousands of dollars. And once you do understand it, you'll be an absolute monster in your shop. So let's say that today you're looking to recommend, find, or buy the next mill for your job shop. You jump online, head over to some of the most popular brands' websites, and start to spec out the machine. You want the most mill for the money. Something that's going to crank chips so fast that you have to hire a full-time guy just to dump your chip hoppers. So you start looking at the spindles and see one that's 12,000 RPM and 40 horsepower. Heck yeah, that sounds good. You pull up the torque chart, see all these funky graphs that look like something off of Einstein's chalkboard with easy to understand terms like S1, S6, etc. with no legend describing what any of that means. So you just figure, ah, it's probably good enough. But you miss something. The fine print under that chart warning you that values shown are 200% spindle load. Without realizing it, you just fell victim to a clever trick that the machine tool builder used to sucker you into thinking that their spindle is better than it actually is. Now you have this piece of junk in your shop and you have to slow everything down or take lighter cuts so that you don't overheat your spindle. Now let's talk really quickly about spindles. In a spindle motor, torque is caused by current flowing in a loop in a magnetic field. The magnetic field might be created by permanent magnets or by an electromagnet. The torque and power available in a spindle changes as the spindle speed changes. There's a limit on the available torque caused by the strength of the magnetic field and the maximum current that the wire can carry. We always get comments from people that have never seen real chips being made saying, oh my God, you guys don't know what you're doing. You're gonna ruin your machine. Or, oh no, what about your spindle's feelings? Well, despite having burst your safe space bubble, we know what we're doing. No spindles were harmed in the making of this video. Now power and torque are directly proportional to material removal rate, and material removal is what makes you money. Titan's done several videos talking about exactly that. The first thing you need to know is what spindle do you need for your particular applications. There's a lot of different spindle types, but for the sake of this discussion, let's look at two of the most common, low speed and high torque, and high speed and low torque. If you're running tons of aluminum and softer materials with tools three quarters of an inch in diameter or less, you'll want the higher speed. If you run tons of steel, titanium, nickel alloys, big drills, big face mills, you're gonna need the high torque. Now that you've identified which spindle type you need, let's talk torque and power curves. Every machine comes with a manual that shows its torque and power curve in a chart. This chart shows exactly how much torque and power are available at different spindle speeds. The second thing that you need to know is that most of these charts are based on a 10 minute block of time. Usually torque and power will be illustrated by at least two different curves each. Sometimes these are shown as percentages, sometimes they're called S1 through S6. So let's take a look at our NHM 6300's chart. Yes, torque! The third thing you need to know is what the spindle is capable of running at continuously. Now this chart is meant to give you all of the information, not to mislead you like the chart we talked about earlier. Now let's put that into perspective. Novo is a great resource for figuring out how much torque and power different cuts will require. So let's take the two and a half inch KSEM Plus Godzilla drill that we blew through a chunk of steel with seven and a half inches deep. If we set our material to P0 for 1018 steel, and enter in our SFM and our inches per rev, you can see that this drill required 43 horsepower and 247 foot-pounds at a spindle speed of 924 RPM. When you look at the other S values or percentages, this is telling you what the machine can do in short bursts. So if this chart is based on a 10 minute block of time, you can run for 15% of that at S3. So that means that so long as you keep your tool path under 1.5 minutes, followed by an 8.5 minute cooldown period back in the continuous range, you actually have 46.9 horsepower available. And this won't hurt your spindle at all. In fact, most machines will simply alarm out for spindle overheat long before you damage your spindle. And finally, is this machine rigid enough to take advantage of what the spindle can do? Everything has to come together just right for you to take full advantage of your spindle. 
Titan recently did a video comparing the SVM4100 to a competitor's machine. That thing is so smooth and rock solid that you can absolutely take full advantage of its spindle. But with the competition, you have a much lighter casting, less contact between the linear guides and rollers, and you'll wear out your ways and ball screws within 10 years rather than 30. If you're going to spend the cash equivalent to buying a new house or many new houses in some cases, you need to make sure that you have a good understanding of what it is you're buying and what it is that you actually need. A little education can go a long way towards avoiding buyer's remorse and lost profits. Thanks for listening. Please like and subscribe. Comment down below if you still have questions or just want to share your experiences with Torque and Power, and I'll see you there. And if you're into going beast mode on your machines, check out one of these other videos. See you all next time.